Hey, welcome to another set of beers, Jack and Barbecue. I'm Craig, man behind the camera's Jack. Does all the wonderful editing. Gives me a hard time every time. I don't do something right here in front of the camera. But hey, that's how we do a good channel, hopefully. Um, today, gonna be an easy one. Got the SNS kettle fired up. We're gonna do some indirect and some direct, direct cooking. But got a nice big hunk of ham here. So it's about an inch and a half to two inch thick slice of ham. We typically buy the entire ham uh, have the butcher slice it, a, a nice end off it, and then maybe a, a big slice or two out of the middle, and then we get the second end. Um, you've actually probably seen me cook uh, ham ends on, on the grill before. We also do them inside the house sometimes just for like ham and beans, um, something we like to do in the winter time. Um, but today, I also like ham steak. So today's gonna be a big ham steak. We're gonna start indirect, get it to about 135 degrees. Um, so 145 is the temperature you need to go to basically cook it at that point. Go to about 135, maybe 138, and then put it over the slow and sear side and sear it off uh, pretty quick because you don't need to char this at all, just need a nice sear on this. So uh, we'll see you out on the grill. All right, let's throw this ham slice on. The grill's running pretty hot. I have it almost like about 375 right now, so. And you can hear how hot it is actually. So I'm just gonna try to just get a, somewhere in the middle there, just to give a guide. As we get closer, I'll do some more checking, but uh, we'll close it up. Maybe when it gets to about 100, 110, we'll uh, actually, uh, turn it around for even cooking. All right, we're gonna give it a flip. We just hit 105. Like I said, and we'll, we'll double check as we get closer with things, but I wanna kinda of just turn it over. Kinda of promote some even cooking, check another spot here. And then when we get, like I said, 135 to 138-ish, um, we'll just start searing it off for the hot coals. All right, so it's telling me we just got to 138. So I'm going to do some double checking, and then we'll probably start searing this off. It's about 136. That's up there around 140. And that's showing you by 130. Nice thing about this probe, when you turn around, it flips the temperature for you. So we're going to be good to go for start searing this off. In fact, I'll get the probe out of the way right away because I'm going to spin the grate now. So move this right over the coals. Just gonna go like a minute aside here. Like I said, I'm not trying to do like a steak sear, but I'm just trying to get some color. All right, there's a minute. Turn it around, move it over. Get a better grip on it. There we go. That's getting there. Do a minute this side, and then maybe we'll go 30 seconds, 30 seconds. All right, another minute. Yeah, don't, doesn't need much. It's like I said, it's for ham. You don't need to kind of make that sear part of it, but I thought we'd do it anyway today. All right, another 30 seconds is done. Just go 30 seconds. I am gonna double check temperatures just to make sure we hit it, but we should be fine. Plus it wants to rest, it's gonna keep climbing a little bit. Getting to 150 is not an issue either with ham, so. And this is good ham, so it's pretty nice and moist to start with, so. Being a little more just makes some of that fat on the edge nice and crispy. All right, that should do it. Right, it's only getting to about 141 there. That one's up there. That's up there. Must have found the sweet spot on that one because it didn't get there. 
Everywhere else I'm reading, it's a pretty good temperature. I'm not going to pick that up, but 143. But till that rests, we'll uh, we'll get to 145. I'm going to yank it off and cover it up, and then we'll get it on the cutting board and uh, take a taste test. As always, cheers. All right, so here we are, end of the cook. Nothing exciting, but a nice, big, beautiful ham steak. Uh, I know there's different people out there, but I love ham. Uh, I grew up Pennsylvania Dutch, so having ham at different holidays is, is kind of awesome, and we make ham quite a bit, just all the time, just because we enjoy it. Um, so this one here, I set up the SNS kettle for indirect and direct cooking, which had the slowness here in, is basically what I'm saying there. So we had it running pretty hot, though, around 375. It actually grew, uh, went to about 400, but that was fine to do the indirect side. Went to about one. 05 or so, I turned it just to kind of promote the even cooking. Um, and then we hit about 138, started searing it off, did some double checking, um, did a minute aside each side, and then did 30 seconds each side um, uh, for that. We had about 142, 143, cover it, let it sit. We're easily over 145 at this point, which is perfect. Um, but like I said, just let it sit there. It got, like I said, it was rocking and rolling. We did use Kingsford, just professional com competition blend airs, Costco product. Um, charcoal is a little bit harder to find this year, but um, typically for me, whenever it's on sale, I load up. So I probably have 20 bags of different types of charcoal in the garage at this point. So uh, cut into this, see what it looks like, and then see what it tastes like. Not a whole lot to show on ham because it's not like I'm showing you the perfect medium rare on a steak. But we'll get a good look inside anyway. And I'll take a taste test here off the corner. It's nice and tender. Nice and tender, nice and juicy. Fat around the edge, a little bit crispy. It's kind of perfect. And I wish our crew would be a little bit more pay attention to us because we forgot again. I was actually going to joke in the beginning about forgetting, and I actually forgot. So, hey, works out. We always take that sip after we do our cheers. So, uh, hope you like your scene. Subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell, get notifications every time I put a video out. And we'll see you next time.